welcome back to the channel and greetings from sunny Ireland I had this idea to, for a hobby project to make a EDC and DAC board compatible with my Z board when I mean compatible with the LVDS connection to the FMC connector so I can digitize um, radio signals and I can synthesize radio signals so I'm building this as an experiment for my radio um, hobby. Um, I started about one year ago. Um, I made the schematic and the PCB. I got the PCB made a few months ago, but I I couldn't find time to progress. But probably I'll um, I'll go ahead and build a few boards. So I'll uh, show you very very quickly a block diagram, schematic, and PCB. Okay, block diagram very very simple explanation from left to right so the the blue square is the z board the z board has a connector with um, with many many pins and uh, many many about 30 if i'm not mistaken uh, lvds pairs are exposed to this connector so i can uh, feed data from the adc and send out data to the dac now um, i chose 14 bit for this design because it's good enough to give me enough uh, um, dynamic range for what I want. So um, I'll, uh, I'll show you exactly the part that I chose and I, a, a brief uh, presentation of the datasheet. So there is a matching network here for the RF signal coming in to be um, presented to the ADC inputs. Now this matching network is built with the transformers so to have a, a wider uh, bandwidth so it's not customized or it's not tailored to a certain frequency it's kind of wide wide band now the DAC the DAC the same is a 14 bit um, 500 megahertz uh, clock I chose actually to have a dual DAC because I can use it as two independent independent DACs or I can choose to make an uh, in-phase and a quadrature signal so I and Q components to be forwarded downstream in, in other um, in other projects okay the schematics uh, I'll, uh, I made the schematics in ORCAD because I know ORCAD and I have a license uh, so this is the, the DAC I'll, I'll start with the DAC um, so this is the DAC chip which is a Texas Instrument DAC 3174 um, it's it's not a very modern DAC, but it's good enough for what I want. Um, it's, take, it's taking the clock here, the clock, uh, the DAC clock, which has to be very very clean. Uh, something I didn't mention in the block diagram, I didn't even put it on the block diagram. I'm generating the clocks for the ADC and for the DAC on this board. So in order to have very very clean clock, I'm generating the clock next to the DAC and the ADC chip. Of course, I'm forwarding that clock. Into the FPGA as well. So this is the DAC, and this is the output you see here. Transformer, so it's uh, from it's transforming from balanced to uh, single-ended. So and I have some some SMA jacks here. So nothing nothing very special. Some linear regulators, decoupling uh, networks, and so on. So this DAC has a SPI interface. So you need to drive different parameters. You can need to choose. How, how, how do you want the data to be presented, how the, how the input data you want to be um, interpreted because you can, you can send the data in, in different ways like interlaced or separate or whatever it, it's all in the data sheet, I'm not going to talk too much about this ADC, the ADC is an LTC uh, linear technology now analog device part um, what is interesting, you can digitize signals, uh, 1 volt um, signals uh, plus minus one volt signals or two volt signals and you can change this by via one pin this uh, pin called sense so it has a two two sen sensitivities or two um, full scale ranges which are selectable uh, now those are the LVDS pairs nothing fancy here this is the input part which is the um, a matching impedance matching circuit as well so uh, everything is taken from the from from the manufacturer reference design. I didn't invent anything here. Okay, uh, going to the clock. Probably this is the most important part. <laughs> so this is a clock chip made by Texas Instruments. 
where you can actually synthesize it has a PLL inside the clock is very clean obviously uh, you can drive all the parameters uh, via an SPI bus um, or you can actually hook up some resistors here and uh, it will start based on the combination of those resistors this is what I choose so I kind of choose here some frequencies some fixed frequencies now I'm I'm generating three clocks three separate clocks right one is the the DAC clock right so this is going to go to the DAC and in the same time a copy of that clock is going to go to the um, to the FPGA so this clock doesn't have to be perfectly clean but this clock the DAC clock has to be jitter free the same thing with the clock uh, in it's called clocked in but actually it's clock out this is going to the ADC so the ADC its uh, sampling rate is driven from here so I have some flexibility to change this if I want uh, right now it's fixed because it's based on those um, resistors um, okay then I'm not going to show you how this is those are the connections to the LPC connector okay now a PCB let me open the PCB right so this is the PCB nothing fancy here um, all those um, LVDS pair the length match so there, there are no there is no skew between the those lanes the same for the for the ADC side uh, it's a four layer PCB so it has to be you need to have proper ground plane uh, in order to work at those kind of um, frequencies some linear regulators here not much now I'll show you the 3d view I have a 3d view because I yeah I hope it's visible I'll try to anyway uh, this is so there are three SMA connectors let me see if I can show it from yeah from top All right so it's the FMC connector here uh, the clock chip in the middle ADC DAC and the transformers for the input part and for the output part nothing fancy here I mean it's like it's just a, it's just a PCB 